Hello everyone. With this episode, we're going to start uh, analyzing, studying extensive form games or solving extensive form games. So we already talked about earlier uh, what we mean by extensive form game. The idea is very simple. Uh, one player moves and then this other player moves. So there is a sequentiality of the moves. Whether the second player observes the first player's actions or not, it's irrelevant, it's unimportant. What matters, I mean, it is important for the solution of the game, obviously, but what matters is that the, you know, one player moves and then after that the second player moves and then after that maybe one player, uh, the same first player or maybe another player moves. So there's this um, a sequence of orders. Um, we talked about how we write the strategies in such games. Remember, strategy is nothing but a function which maps every information set to, a, uh, to an action that is available at that information set. Well, in this episode, uh, we are going to uh, make uh, you know, some more definitions. Basically, the idea is to clarify what we mean by game tree. Well, the game tree, remember, extensive form games are represented as game tree, such as this one. Uh, we previously learned how to represent this game tree uh, as, as a normal form or a strategic form. But now we are going to look at the extensive form or the game tree and sort of try to understand our new solution concepts over the game trees. So, again, our purpose in this episode is to clarify what we mean by game tree. There should be a set of rules, right? Not all tree-like structure is a game tree. So here are the rules. Okay, so first off, well, game tree is nothing but, in mathematics, uh, what's called directed graph. If you, know, if you don't know what it is, just fine. Uh, but if you know what it is, uh, well, yes, game tree is a directed graph. Well, game tree consists of nodes that are connected by branches. So this is, for example, a node. This is another node. This is another node. And those are branches that are connecting the nodes. Um, sometimes this is also called nodes. Uh, it's it's going to be called terminal node. Uh, so these brackets are basically the end of the game and, and here are the payoffs of the players. Uh, so each branch is an arrow in a sense, although we do not draw them like an arrow, but you can think of them as an arrow. It's a one-way arrow though, so you always go downwards. Uh, there is no upward uh, movement, all right? Because that represents the first player and then the second player or the third player, I mean the, the, the next player in the sequence and then the next players in the sequence and so on. All right, so each branch is an arrow which connects two nodes. Well, you can start from a given node and trace through the tree by following the arrows, right? So you can start from a, a given node and trace through all the way till the end of the game. Uh, later, we're gonna call it path, but I'll come to it. All right, so the two words which are very important and we're going to use them a lot, successors, predecessors. So successors are basically those that follow Predecessors, so pre, I mean, just remember it from the pre. So predecessors are those that are followed. So for example, uh, in, 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 you know, there's elections in the United States. So you can think of Donald Trump was, uh, uh, was, was the successor for Obama and Obama was the predecessor, uh, is the predecessor of uh, Donald Trump, okay? So th these words are important, you'll see why. All right, a node X, all right, is a successor of y if and only if y is a predecessor of uh, x. All right, so if you can, if you think this as x, node x and node y, so here x is predecessor of y if and only if y is a successor, uh, 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 y is a Oh, okay. So here, I'm sorry, the, um, uh, the, the, the X and Y has been uh, changed. So let me, uh, I mean, here it, X is a successor of Y, but here Y is a successor of X. So be careful about it. So here, if this, is, if this node is X and this node is Y, well, then Y is a successor of X, and therefore X is a predecessor of, of Y, all right? So um, 
I hope that's clear and I, I hope I did not confuse you with this uh, you know, uh, switch in notation. All right, so if a decision note X is a predecessor of Y and Y is a predecessor of Z, well, then X must be predecessor of Z, all right? So this idea of successor being successor or predecessor is some sort of a transitive relation, okay? Okay, well, uh, a game tree starts with what we call initial note, all right? So for example, this is the initial note. It basically represents the beginning of the game or the first player that moves in this game. And, and then each game, each game tree ends at some terminal node. So this is a terminal node, which uh, we represent the payoffs here. That means there is going to be no more uh, strategic interaction after this point. It's the end of the game. This is another um, a terminal node. This one too. So in this, for example, game, we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, terminal node. Okay. So once again, each game tree starts with an initial node, just one initial node. We can't have two initial nodes. All right. Um, yes. I mean, we usually don't have two initial nodes, but I'm going to take it back. I mean, some, some weird games or some interesting games may have actually two uh, initial nodes. Um, so, uh, but definitely there might be, uh, there will be more than one terminal nodes. All right. Well, what else? Uh, a path is a sequence of nodes that has the following properties. One, it starts with the initial node. Okay. Um, for sake of simplicity in the argument, you can assume that there's uh, only one initial node. Okay. Um, a second, uh, the, the, the path ends with a terminal node and then three successive nodes in the sequence are immediate successors of each other. All right. So in this game, I'm going to use a different color. So this is one path. Okay. It basically connects three nodes, X, Y, and Z. All right. And clearly Z is an immediate successor of Y. Y is an immediate successor of X etc. All right. So there are many uh, paths in this game. Uh, let me use a different color. This is also a path. All right. So if you count how many paths are there, well, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six. So there are six paths. Well, is this related to number of uh, terminal nodes? Well, yes. Uh, normally, and it's it's what we should have, uh, the number of terminal nodes determine the number of paths in the game. All right. Um, however, this is not a path. Uh, so let's say uh, we take this and then this. That's it. So this is not a path. So let me so this is not a path. It's sort of impartial. You have to reach to a terminal node in order to define a sort of path. So it has to be full path. You see what I mean? All right. So now let's talk about rules. So what are the rules uh, for all these nodes and branches uh, to satisfy uh, and fulfill the concept of uh, game tree? Well, rule number one is the following. Every node is a successor of the initial node, right? Every node is a successor of the initial node. It doesn't have to be immediate successor, but successor nevertheless. And initial node is the only node with this property. All right. So the initial node is not a successor of uh, anything else, any other node. All right. Rule number two says, um, by the way, I already posted these lecture notes, so you don't, uh, if, if you can't read them or if you can't uh, take notes, don't worry, the lecture notes will be uh, posted on the course website. So the second rule says the following, each decision note, sometimes we call them just decision note, sometimes decision note, uh, so they mean the same thing. So each note, except the initial note, has exactly one immediate predecessor. The initial node has no predecessor. So that's very important. Um, for example, this terminal node has only one immediate predecessor, which is Z. This also has one immediate predecessor, which is Z again, 
that's fine. But the thing is, you cannot have, uh, for example, a node here, and it's it has predecessors. Uh, immediate, it has three or two predecessors. This can't happen. All right, any any structure, a tree structure, satisfying something like this will not be uh, will not be game tree. All right. Okay, what else? Rule number three. Oh, by the way, the initial node has no predecessor. Okay, so rule number, this is why we call it initial uh, node. Rule number three says multiple branches extending from the same node have different action labels. All right, so here, uh, pick any node other than ob obviously the uh, terminal nodes, right? Uh, by the way, if a node is not a terminal node, we call it non-terminal non-terminal node. So here in this game, we have one, two, three, four, five non-terminal nodes. Okay, so for any non-terminal node, there's gonna be a bunch of branches, right? For example, this guy, this guy has two branches. Uh, this guy also has two branches. Those branches basically tells us, uh, you know, the different action uh, that, that are available for this player to select, okay? Rule number four says each information set, so we know what information set, we, in, in our earlier uh, sections and videos, we talked about information set. Basically, information set is, uh, it consists of at least two decision nodes. So here, um, all information sets have single decision node, all right? So each uh, non-terminal uh, decision node is also an info set, information set. However, we may have something like this. You know, some textbooks put dots, some circle them. It basically means these two decision nodes are in this information set or are, this, are in the same information set. All right, so each information set contains at least two decision nodes for only one of the players. What does that mean? That means for any given information set, you cannot have nodes that belong to two or more people. It has to, I mean, all the decision nodes must belong to one and only one player. Okay, rule number five and our final rule says the following. All nodes in a given information set must have the same number of immediate successors and they must have the same set of action labels on the branches leading to these successors. Well, it basically says the following, if these two decision nodes are in the same info set, well, then we have to have two branch, if we have two branches here, we also must have two branches here. I mean, <clears throat> this is, for instance, uh, not a game tree. Very quickly, another example, so, this is initial node, let's say. This, these two decision nodes are in the same info set and the game is over, so the payoffs. All right, so this is not a game tree. If this and this decision nodes are in the same info set, which are, which they are, well then the number of air, uh, uh, branches that follow these decision nodes must be the same. If you have two here, you must have two here. If you have three here, you must have three here, okay? So let's suppose both decision nodes has three branches. That means, remember, branches are uh, sort of different labels for available actions. And if here the available actions are called A, B, C, well here you can't call them X, Y, Z. They also, uh, Z, they also must be called with same letter, all right? A, B, C. So here A means, for example, jump up. Here B means hide away. And C means scream. Well, then here, that means one of the actions available for you is screaming, one of them is jumping, the other one is hiding out. You see what I mean? So the set of available actions at each decision node must be the same, okay? Uh, three notions are important. Uh, the first one is uh, the, the idea of perfect recall. So we are actually talking about, in this course, uh, games with perfect recall. What, it, what does that mean? It means all players can perfectly recall all their 
or their own previous actions. They may not observe their opponent's previous actions, but they perfectly observe and remember their own actions. All right, so meaning players do not forget anything. That's, that's very important. So this is not a game. This is more like a decision problem. Uh, but if you consider this, so player one is acting, uh, choosing between A, B, and C, and then later he is choosing again between uh, uh, X and Y. Okay, so again, this is not really a game because we don't have the second player, but I mean, if you like, you can make this, you know, a more than one person decision problem by adding a second player somewhere. But here the idea is the following. The first guy is first choosing A, B, and C, but then later he can't remember whether he selected B or C. All right, so he forgets his own action. So we are never going to look at games like this. So each player remembers his or her own previous actions. All right, so in such games we call perfect recall. Uh, we know, I mean, I know, in reality, by the way, this is not really the case. Uh, we make a move and then we forget it uh, after a while. And so we are forgetful, in fact, and that certainly uh, influence our uh, sort of behaviors in real life. Uh, but the reason we ignore these games are because uh, they cause us uh, sort of interesting technical complications. Ariel Rubinstein uh, has a very nice paper with Michael Piccioni, if I am pronouncing his or, or her name correctly. Um, they are sort of looking at games with imperfect recall, but you know, there's a lot of, so it's a, it's a very uh, uh, unfamiliar territory for game theorists, I must admit. All right, well, we distinguish extensive form games into two class, games with perfect information and games with imperfect information. So games with perfect information is basically all info sets or all information sets are singleton. Okay, and if this is not true, well, then the game is a game with imperfect information, which means there exists at least one information set with two or more uh, decision nodes. Okay, so what does that mean? For example, if this is player one, this is player two, this is a perfect recall game, but this is a game with imperfect information because here in this game, there is an information set that is not singleton. So all info sets are singleton means basically each player can perfectly observe each previous actions, all right? So here, uh, if you wanna make this game perfect information game, this is what you would do. Player two, player three, or you know, you can put player two as well, doesn't matter. So here, player two can perfectly observe the first players, the previous player's action, all right? So once again, if all the information sets are singleton, uh, that means everybody can perfectly observe all the previous actions and hence we call these games perfect information. However, if this is not the case, meaning if there is at least one information set including two or more nodes, well then this game has imperfect information, okay?